hear and receive what the Lord have for us. The scripture says, he that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. Amen. We come in many times and we hear things that people have put together, but the Lord had nothing to do with it. So tonight, we want to hear what the Lord has to say to us. Amen. As I was saying a moment ago, um, Minister Joel Wilson, um, I've known him for quite a few years, and he's always been that type of young man that you would take note of. He's, a, he's an individual that when you see him in the conventions, he's yeah. praising God. If you stop and talk to him in the hall, he's magnifying the Lord. If you go to the church in Winchester, Kentucky, you're going to find him doing the same thing. Sometimes we find people when they're out and about and when they're in the midst of a crowd, they want to be seen, so they do certain things a certain way. Hallelujah. But when you follow them back home, then you really find out that, that it's all a show. But I was in Winchester in September, and I was back in the office and um, talking to his pastor, who's his grandmother. And, and we were talking, and I could hear him just going forth. Out in the and he was going forth in the name of the Lord. And the way you find him here, whether it's at the convention or whether it's at home or whether wherever he is, he is one that's going to magnify the name of the Lord. And he's doing it with a sincere heart, not for an outside show. And before he come on this evening, we're going to ask his wife, Sister Kim, if she would give us a solo. God bless you, Sister Kim. Give her a hand as she comes.
we all together put our hands together and lift our voices and tell the Lord thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. Let us lift our hands in worship. Hallelujah. With praises and adoration. Hallelujah. Let us give the Almighty the fruit of our lips and tell him thank you. Hallelujah. For whatever it is. Hallelujah. That you find yourself grateful. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. 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 One more time, let us lift our hands. Hallelujah. With a wave offering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 We praise the Lord for his wonderful works toward the children of men. Has God been wonderful in your life? Hallelujah. Has God been wonderful in your life? Thank you. Hallelujah. Therefore, we have great reason, hallelujah, to praise and worship. Hallelujah. And bless the God of our salvation. Hallelujah. We honor God. We call Yahweh at home. Hallelujah. We bless his name. We bless him for his son, Jesus the Christ, who died for our sins. Amen. Amen. Man, give, give everybody a chance to get settled. Man, you see our son Joshua, he's, he's clingy to his mom. And Joshua may have to come up here and sit in the chair with mommy amen we're glad to be here in the city of gordonsville amen. we'll let joshua get settled amen. i think joshua settled amen let's tell the lord thank you for that it's very important that Joshua get settled. Well, he's still in, in a very serious training point of his life. Man, it is crucial that our children at this age receive the things that they need to receive, and that is not only to be spoiled, but to be properly directed. Amen. 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 All right. So glad to be here in the Sabbath. Uh, thank the Almighty for his traveling mercies. Thank you for bringing us through another six days. Aren't you grateful? Man, that the Almighty watched over us throughout the night hours, suffered no hurt, harm, or danger to come upon us. Man, with all the things that are happening, as I, my companion sang or sung the song, tragedies, and they're a common thing anymore uh, for people to enter into other people's homes and do things that they should not be doing. But it looks as if we've all been kept in safety. Man, and for nothing else other than that, we owe the Almighty praise. And we honor great apostle uh, Bishop Raglan on tonight. Man, what a privilege it is to stand here in the place that he stood over the years and preached the gospel of the Almighty. We thank you for consenting and allowing yours truly to be here, sir. Man, did not have to allow that to be. Um, to our co-pastor, our elder James Raglan, and we honor him on tonight for uh, he is a good man, and thank you for thinking of me. He did not have to do that to allow me to come here and speak to these young people. Uh, it could be, as he said, that I could be a hypocrite, but he sees something in my life that says otherwise. Man, to Bishop Raglan's companion, man, Lady First Lady Raglan, we honor you. Uh, to Elder Raglan's uh, companion, to our Minister Wesley, 
our deacon, uh, Walter Preston, amen, to the saints and friends, uh, uh, faces that I, I know and faces that I don't know, uh, it is good to be here with all of you on tonight, amen, I know that we don't want to prolong the time, so we ask, I'm going to ask that you would turn your attention, just prepare yourselves for the book of Isaiah chapter 40, if you would please. I honor my companion on tonight. I thank the Almighty for the blessing that he has given me in and through her. Man, I thank her uh, for coming with me. Amen. And being here on tonight, what a beautiful song she sang just a few moments ago. And, and it touched our hearts. Uh, I thank the Almighty for my children. Uh, as my wife said, six years ago we were here for the first time. We had heard about the wonder, this wonderful place. And our pastor, Lady Wilson, was blessed to come here and run a revival. And, uh, and the Almighty spoke to my heart on third Wednesday night and said for us to go. And with what little we had, we packed up and we came uh, over those mountains. I did not know those mountains were <laughs> all that they are, but he brought us. Yeah. Amen. And six years later, he has, he has kept you all. You look good. You look like all is well. And he's blessed and added to our family. Uh, three children, one of which are not here, and most importantly, he's kept our marriage and kept us saved and sanctified through many hard trials. Amen. Uh, tonight, uh, as I've been thinking, consulting to the Almighty about what it is I should say to his people from him, the Almighty has uh, placed it, seen fit to place it in me and in my mouth to talk to saints here and particularly the young people here, uh, if you consider yourself young, will you please raise your hand very quickly? Consider yourself young. <laughs> a good, diverse group of young people. Amen. Amen. That's a beautiful thing. Amen. Uh, when I talk to some older people, I find out that what we as the house of God have deemed young, there are some people 60 or 80 and 90 years old that have told me my husband and I were still young at 60. So we put an age limit on it, but age is just a number sometimes, Amen. isn't it? Amen. However, we're talking to our young adults on tonight and uh, young teenagers in the Sabbath. And the Almighty has placed it in me to talk about birthrights. Birthrights. Hope that this will make some sense to you. I believe that it will. Uh, for we preach with purpose, the, the ministers of God. Amen. We prophesy. We we do his work with purpose, believing what? That, that the Almighty will send his word out and it will not return unto him void or incomplete without accomplishing the job. So it's for somebody if it's not just but for one. Title of tonight's subject and for tomorrow as well is, is that great failures, great failures can provoke great triumphs. Great failures can provoke great triumphs. And for a subtopic, we would take passing on the birthright. Passing on the birthright. The word birthright simply means that it is a right are our rights, our privileges, sometimes possessions, to which one is entitled to by birth. All right. All right. Rights, privileges, sometimes possessions, right. that one can say he or she is entitled to by birth. All right. Almighty, this week began to make a lot of sense out of this, this topic for me and to me on this week. Uh, I'm going to say this to you as the Almighty put this in me. Given the history of this church and what little bit I know about it, it is my job to only remind you, as I'm sure you all already know, but some young people may not, may see it, but sometimes you don't quite understand it. Almighty is saying to this congregation on tonight and in this Sabbath, that all members of this congregation have the opportunity 
to receive and share in the birthright that was and that is left by the forefathers of Israel and the house of God here in this place. I'll say that again. All members, not just family members and not just some special members or some who were worse off than others and got saved and good and saved, but all members of this church, this congregation, are entitled to or have the opportunity to receive and share in the birthright that was left by our forefathers Israel of Israel right, right. and the forefathers of this great house of God. Amen. It is the trick of the adversary that when we settle ourselves in God's house and when we become members and we, we look at situations, we look at the setup, the structure, and we come uh, to have a little more knowledge about what's going on in the church, that sometimes people get a little unsettled about things. Sometimes it is the, 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 the trick of the adversary that he plays on, on what's already going in us, which is sometimes insecurities, sometimes concern for self-preservation. Sometimes we're wondering where our place is, particularly young people are wondering, where's our place? Where's my place in God's house? The Almighty wants you to be assured tonight that, that what was ordained from in, in generations past was for your benefit and for you to partake in. Now, knowing this, knowing this, and knowing that we're speaking to young people, I want to begin to talk about young people. I want you to know that I know from my experiences being young, and I'm, I'm 29, still young, and from meeting other young people and working with young people at our local congregation, that there are some characteristics that are automatically built into young people. They're automatically built into the psyche, into the mind, into the spirit of young people. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 30. As I said, this may not be for everybody tonight. This may only be a witness to what some have gone through this weekend. Uh, this may only be a witness. And to some, this is preparation for where you're headed. Sometimes the preach word, as I was taught, is not always for tonight. It's not always for what's going on right now. But it's for what we're headed into in tomorrow. Amen. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 30. I'll try to be swiftly as I possibly can. Even the youths shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. Characteristics of young people. This is not a, not a prophecy from me uh, uh, speaking something over your life to say that all is well with you today and here this young man has come from Winchester to tell me tomorrow I'm about to mess up. This is not a prophecy from Joel. But this is the word of the Almighty saying that the characteristics of young people, young men, young women, are that they faint. Sometimes in life, because of various reasons, we get weary and we fall. Very quickly, very quickly. We want to answer the question for why that is. It's not really the situations that we face. It's not really... Uh, our homes and the structure of our homes uh, that cause us to faint, get weary, and fall. Ecclesiastes chapter 11. I want to move a little swiftly through these things because these are just our groundwork for where, we're, where we really need to hit home with some of our young people. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Verse 9, I want to give the answer that the Bible gives to us for why things are the way they are for us sometimes. Chapter 11, verse 9, the scripture reads, Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart and in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou that for all these things, 
for all of this rejoicing, for all of this, this glee, and all of this cheer, and, and all of these things that we see and, and, and uh, I sometimes uh, look upon and the things that our hearts feel, for all of these things that you get yourself involved into, know thou that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. Answer for why we fall, why we get weary, why we faint. Therefore remove sorrow from thy heart and put away evil from thy flesh. For childhood and youth are vanity. Answer for why we are the way we are automatically. Because of our vanity. And the word vanity simply means something that is vain or empty. Or useless. Case in point, uh, uh, speaking particularly, our youth. The strength that we have in these mortal bodies and the understanding that we have about life and the world and the church and why the saints are the way they are, why the pastor is the way he is, and why people respond to us the way we do, and why we ought to do for ourselves the thing we ought to do. Vanity. It's, it's our youth. It's, it's the way we look at the world. I want you to know that because of our trust in our youth and in, in, in these things and the fact that we just know everything when we're young, and that's not to be smart, Alec, it's just putting it the way it is, being honest. As a young man myself, being able to see why life has gone the way it's gone is because we're vain. We're vain. We, we know it all. We, we know it all. Let us tell it. We, we understand all mysteries. We understand why mother and father uh, have done and don't do. And Young people invest time and energy and many uh, and money into being young and doing young activities. But sometimes, most of the time, Heartfelt sorrow, evil, and loss result from many of our youthful activities. Some of the most heartfelt sorrows and pain can come when we realize what we as, as young people have involved ourselves in and, and what it has cost us. Some of the most heartfelt pain comes when we wake up and we recognize what we've, what we've done because of our vanity, with our strengths, with our understanding. Now, how does this relate to birthright? How does all this relate to birthright? As I said, that regardless as to who you are, how you got here, how long ago you came, or if you just got here last week, the Almighty has intended from the foundation, it's my understanding that the house of God, for the most part, was birthed here. Isn't this correct? Partially. There's the first church, something. I, I, my first visit here, there was a small church back here. Yeah. Still there. Isn't it one of the first house of God? Yes. That, that church had a great deal to do with the beginning of the structure of, of what we now know to be as the house of God incorporated. Amen. The prayers, the fasting... The work, the toil, the labor, right. the press yes. that took place through individuals many years ago yes. was for the building up right. of God's house, All right. All right. for the establishment of his covenant with his people, yes. and his covenant was with those people and with Abraham that if you would obey me. Yes. That if those people would step out by faith and separate themselves, that God would bless them. That he would establish the works of their hands. And then, not only that, but God was saying to them, I assure thee that I will take care of thy seed. So how does this relate? This, sometimes we as young people, we don't recognize where we are and how important the place of which we dwell is and, and what has brought us to this point. And I, I, I don't know how many of you this, this relates to, but some of you here, 
It has been the attack of the adversary for some of you from the days of, uh, of, of your birth to take you out of the house of God, but most importantly, this place. Your birthright, your entitlement to the blessings of God and to peace in your life start and originate right here. Sometimes our young people, they don't like what we establish. They don't like the structure of, of, of things that are going on. And that's not to say that everything's right, but it's not our call. And that causes young people and then other things such as we want to live life and we want to be where we think something's going on at. So we'll leave the place of our birthing. Sometimes people don't recognize the importance of staying where you belong until God says for you to go somewhere else because when God sends you somewhere else, it is at that time that God is going to pass on birthright to you. God, we got to move. Let's, let's, let's move. The origin of our birthright starts with our forefather, Abram. In Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 through 3, God called Abram out of the land of Ur of the Chaldees and said to him, Get thee from out amongst your people. Now right there, the Almighty begins to establish a relationship with Abraham. And begins to point out to him, I want you to go from this place and to the place of which I send you. It's going to please me right now for you to move and to, to go where I will set you. Uh, at the age of 75 years old, God promised Abraham, move to Genesis real quick with me, chapter 12. I want you to see this for yourselves. I want you to read it. Everybody that considers themselves young, it is very important. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 through 3. Now the, Lord's, now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house in unto a land that I will shew thee. And I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. You got to know where you are. Sometimes God has dropped us off from wherever our travels have, have taken us. And God has dropped us off into some places that the scripture calls wealthy places. Sometimes because of our vanity, and you can be 50 and 60, but because you're still investing time into vain things, you don't recognize that you're in a blessed and wealthy place. Come on, come on, come on. Complaining and murmuring and arguing and fighting. All along being fooled by your own vanity. If they let me get involved and they let me work this and if they just had to listen to me and when I voted, if everybody had to went with my vote, vanity, uselessness, your own strengths. So the origin of our birthright starts right here. The almighty Yahweh or God intended for our forefathers to leave inheritance for their children. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22 says, take note, just write that down, says, a good man leaves an inheritance right. to his children's right. children. Right. Sometimes, and it, almighty has just been dealing with me concerning this this week. Sometimes it seems as though the message that is hardest to grasp and yeah, yeah. the one you work with the longest, you understand what I'm saying? It's, it's it's very vital, and sometimes you just, I, I walked away from it. I said, don't want to bother that today. So much to deal with. I want you to know that there are people that have worked hard and labored and, and have strove uh, in the spirit realm yeah. for what is today 
for your benefit and not only for your benefit but for the children and for the seed that is going to come out of this young people in this house. The Almighty has saw fit that they have pleased him so that they're able to say, well, here's some for this one. And here's, here's this establishment for this day, but we're not just focused on this day, but our eyes look 50 years down the road, and we're now preparing ourselves for what is to come. The adversary says to young people, nothing's coming out of this. The best has already come. What was, was, and it's time for us to move on to greener pastures. But God says to you, not so. All right. The other pastors have not established covenant with God uh -huh. in the manner that we think, you know, these things ought, ought to be done. Some people have built their houses on various things, but... Some houses that we're looking at and we're thinking in our minds upon it, I should move here and I should move there. Their house have not been built right. on the covenant such as this house. Now, I'm not trying to win brownie points for anybody here today. Just came to speak to you young people what God is saying to you and what is important for you this day. What is important? I want you to know that there's been no guarantees to your forefather, there were no guarantees that this would work. Amen. In terms of, God said that this would be, God said this to Abraham, that I will bless those that bless you, and I will bless your seed. But there was no guarantee in Abraham's life besides God's word that it was going to work. All right. Because we, not so much that we can change what God is saying and what he's going to do, but in covenant or in promise keeping, for the outcome to be what God has said for it to be, we've got to live up to our part. All right. And I come to, please remind yourself that in our youth we get weary, we, we faint, we get weary, we fall. There was no guarantee that those people who started out in the cold and probably didn't have a, a, a whole lot of everything that they were going to make it. They probably doubted within themselves many a night. God, are you with us? Sometimes when our position was at its greatest, there were probably times when people wanted to look back and go back to wherever it is they had come from. Right. It's my understanding that Bishop A.R. Johnson was a man out of a Methodist church, if, if I'm correct. He could have very easily have gone back to that establishment. That was a popular church of the day and still is in this day and time. Could have very easily, in his youth, said, I give up. Oh, my father. God is saying, to let you know, forefathers, there were times that they failed. Genesis chapter 12, just take a note. Abraham and Sarai, or Abram and Sarai, in their attempts to do what God was saying. They left from their kindred, meeting all of these new people. The Bible says that they went in Egypt, and they ran into Pharaoh. And when they got there, they attempted to deceive Pharaoh. In other words, they lied. No guarantees that things were going to be. Because the covenant and, 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 and the promises of God are based on us living up to our agreement. If you say, God, I'll go, Lord, I'll go, then that's what he's looking for. For you to get about going when he tells you to go. So... Genesis 12, they lie. Young people. They were 75, but believe it or not, in their relationship with God, they were very young. Genesis 16, Sarai gives Abraham Hagar and says to him, go in. I'm barren. Things aren't looking too promising. God's saying you're going to have a seed, and we've tried several times. It's not looking. And she says, let's fix it up our way. Hey, listen to me. Go in with this woman. She, actually, he wedded the woman. Yeah. Wasn't a ceremony, but just the act of going in with that woman, right. he took on another wife. Right. And from the beginning, it was not so. Yes. God had already got upset with one, one of Adam's son, I believe his name was Laban. Yeah. And the fact that he had had more than, come on here. Come on. All right, all right. 
So can you imagine the displeasure in God's eyesight with Abram? And God said, I'm trying to establish a people and you're messing up. As you, we mess up. God's trying to establish relationship yes. so that when the mantle is ready to be passed on, we're in place to say, hold on me, and we mess up. We mess up. Genesis uh, chapter 17, very shortly after he messes up, he and Sarah has this baby out of wedlock or in new wedlock. Genesis 17 and 1, the Almighty still being persistent with his vision. And I hope that you young people find encouragement that the Almighty is, uh, is persistent about getting out of you his intentions. All right. Genesis 17 and 1, Yah tells Abram, walk before me and be perfect. In other words, you've messed up twice here in this little relationship. I'm not pleased with that, but I'm going to give you another chance. And matter of fact, what I want is perfection. I want a tightrope. How many of you young people can attest to God sometime in the service speaking to you and sometimes at home and sometimes on your little part-time job saying to you, I want more out of you? Uh -huh. And you're looking at your life, God telling you to come high, and you're saying, I'm barely doing good where I am now. And you say, do more? Can you imagine Abram? He's got this baby now with another woman living in his house. His wife is fired up and mad at him, and God said, now be perfect. Yeah. Stakes are raising, and you say be perfect? <laughs> this woman's mad at me. And you say be perfect. God says, at the age of 99, 24 years later in the relationship, walk before me. Continue to do what I called you out from amongst your kindred to do and, to, and, and walk right. Genesis 20, he says, uh, we find not long after this experience in Genesis 20, Abraham, who's now had his change, Abram now had his name changed to Abraham, Sarah to Sarah, while attempting to be perfect, they lie again. See a pattern? I bet this sounds like some of our lives. Abraham lies to the king who was called Abimelech. Sarah lies along with him and says, this is my brother, I'm his sister. Because they were afraid that the king would take his wife and do wrong with her, but their ways still caught up with them. They put Bamelech in danger that God would wake him in a dream in the middle of the night and say, I am going to kill you. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes we don't recognize that when the Almighty has called us into relationship, and I don't care if you're 20 or 21 or 24, how long you've been in relationship, sometimes if, 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 if we, don't rec we, we, we don't recognize that when we don't obey God, and begin to come higher, that every time he says come higher, we endanger other people. We're not the only ones in danger. God is saying, it's time for you to use your gift that I've put in some of you. And there are people who are supposed to be blessed by whatever your gift is. And their healing, their word at that particular moment is in your mouth. Deliverance for some people at those particular times when God has said, come high, their blessing is coming through you. Whether you understand it to, or not, you young people, the church of tomorrow, their blessing and their preach word and, and, and who they are to become, part of that is going to come through what the Almighty is investing in you right now. And when we choose not to obey God, those that are around us, are in danger. Case in point, Jonah chose not to go and preach what God told him to preach. 